Good morning, NFC East, and happy hump day. Happy Wednesday, everybody. I, I still can't get it in my mind it's Wednesday. Jeff Kerr here, Tone to Shields with you. We got some Eagles talk today, but it is week 17, Tone, and the Dallas Cowboys play tomorrow. The Washington Commanders play the Cleveland Browns. The Giants are a win away from clinch up playoff spot, which we'll have Kevin Boiler on at 720. We'll, we'll talk about the Giants and we'll talk about the playoff race and everything else. But I wanted to get started with this. And you and I were talking backstage about it. The Darius Slay controversy that shouldn't be a controversy. This is what kind of bugs me about the whole thing. Everybody's talking about the third and 30 play. And how Darius Slay let T.Y. Hilton run by it. Well, that was kind of by design because he was supposed to get help over the top from Josiah Scott and Reed Blankenship, right? Well, sure. we know that as... Someone who watches a lot of football, I kind of do that. The first, my initial thought was, Josiah Scott, what are you doing, man? And then I was like, whose man was that initially? And it was Slay's. And Slay goes on Twitter and defends himself and basically sells out Josiah Scott. At least that's how I took it. I would love to ask Darius personally because I think he'd give me an honest answer. It just was a bad look tone. And it, it, it's, again, I don't like the unwarranted criticism of the man. Because he's had such a good year. But for people to just trash this guy on social media for no apparent reason, I think you're trashing him for the wrong reason. Yeah, like for me, I'm looking at Darius Slay like, my man, you got to live with it. Sure, in that zone coverage, you know, you, you're supposed to pass over the guy to, you know, your safety help. And yeah, just Scott, just high Scott, he wasn't there. He wasn't there He or, or he wasn't there on time. However you want to slice it. At the end of the day, we win together, we lose together. So I didn't like how Darius Slay, as a team captain, kind of was just, you know, trying to pass the buck to his young guy. And look, Darius Slay, you're the veteran, right? Darius Slay, he's been playing, you're, he's been playing this game for a long time. And he's always been a vocal guy. He's always been a guy who wears his, wears his heart on his sleeve. I never, I never wanted to take that from a guy. But there comes a time where you just have to take it on the chin. You have to just say, you know what? I should have prepared my young guy for that situation a little better. I should have put my young guy in a better situation. I should have communicated a little better. You're the team captain. You have to conduct yourself as such. And granted, this is his first year being a captain. But when you see moments like this, it makes you wonder, wow, maybe this is why it took so long for him to become a captain. This is your 10th year in the league, too. 10th year in the league, first time being a captain. And... A guy of your pedigree, sometimes they just give you the captain label because you're one of their best players. But you you weren't even able to get a captain patch in Detroit, so that's something to think about. But look, I'm not here to I'm not here to disrespect Darius Slay and talk about what he hasn't done. I'm here to more so talk about the fact that in that moment, yeah, it was a blown coverage. It was what it was what it was. That's sure it was a it was a defining play. You can make an argument that play um, was more so uh, it changed the complexion of that game. That play changed the complexion of that game entirely, if you ask me. But ultimately, Darius Slay, he has to do a better job of just responding to that, man. Um, Not a good look for him to just continue to throw Josiah Scott under the bus. He didn't say his name, but we all know what he's doing. So, you know, that's that's my take on it. Why was everybody going after his wife on Twitter? That's that's what I didn't understand. Like, what what does Jen have to do with anything? I I don't know if you guys know Darius Darius Slay's wife is – she's very vocal on Twitter, but she's not – degrading in any means like no no she, she's all she, she's always positive yeah like I, I maybe that was why he did what he did because she was getting the vitriol and he was kind of defending his wife but again like i don't know why like people were dropping in her mentions like oh look what your husband did look at this i'm like who cares at the end of the See, day like, like that's it's, that's the gift of the curse jeff you know when you're really vocal on social media when you're kind of like that um that football wife or or or, or any sports wife right you know you know, when you really enjoy the game, you know, when you're a real, you know, when you're a strong supporter of your partner um, playing a sport, regardless of what sport it is, you, you become a target because people know you're vocal. You know what I mean? And I think it's I always think it's cool when you have spouses who are vocal and talk about the game, who are real active in the fan base, who do. And, you know, she, she, she's always giving back to the fan base all the time. Yeah, it's so, like Reese Hoskinson's wife. She, she does that a lot. Yeah. Too. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's a gift and a curse when you put yourself out there. You know, just you know, just just as good things can come in, bad things can leak in as well. So 
Um, no, nah, and in, in, in no shape way or form does she deserve any sort of vitriol. At the end of the day, it's a game. It's a child's game at the end of the day. It's, 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 you, they get paid millions to, to play a kid's game. So, look, it, it, it's going to be fine. The game ultimately means nothing in the grand scheme of things. They were able to keep up with the Dallas Cowboys with the backup, losing 34 to 40. There's nothing for that team to hang their head about. That was probably the ugliest play of the game. So if you ask me, I've moved on already. It's about time other people move on. But, of course, you got to keep in mind that, and I'm always in tune with this, there's fan bases are always beefing back and forth. Eagles and Cowboys fan base, I see a lot of that. And There's a lot of it know, on here yesterday. You know, you know, it's fun. You know, you know, it's fun. It's comedy. You know, and I try to keep it that. I try to keep it light. Um, some people take it a little further than that. I don't really, I don't really get too deep into those conversations because those people are kind of weird to me. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's a child's game and Darius Slay, Josiah Scott, at the end of the day, it was their responsibility to make sure T.Y. Hilton didn't catch that ball and he caught it. So at the end of the day, it is, it is what it is. Yeah. They still had a chance to win that game. I'm not going to sit here and say that play alone decided the game. It changed the complexion of the game, but that play alone didn't decide the game. A lot of things happened after that. See, I, I thought this was funny, right? So when Slay went on Twitter to kind of defend the play, I actually thought he was going after T.Y. Hilton at first. I don't know if you heard T.Y. Hilton's comments, but he said, maybe they'll learn to respect me now. I'm like, respect you? Dude, okay, sorry, awesome. Like <laughs> yeah, you caught a 52-yard pass, but you were out of the league like two weeks ago. Like, I'm sorry if teams don't respect you or fear you like they once did. Like, you're still, you still can play. That That's clear as day. So maybe that's where the respect term comes in. But, like, man, you're not catching a 52-yard pass on third and 30 all the time. Yeah, I, I, I'll be honest, man. I don't want to sound like – I don't want to sound like those guys that are super disrespectful, but <laughs> let me just put it this way. T.Y., with all due respect, bro, no, n- nobody been checking for you for a long time. <laughs> like – no, I, I forgot. He, he, I thought he was retired like a month ago. Like, I just figured like, he was done. He hasn't been that guy in a long time. He barely could stay on his field, stay on the field throughout his entire career. Like, and look, injuries happen, and injuries are never a guy's fault. Maybe in terms of your diet, maybe as far as taking care of yourself, maybe as far as recovery, maybe those things factor into, and maybe those things, of course, those things factor in. And, you know, maybe, you know, you, you attribute to that, right, or lack thereof. But T.Y. Hutton, my brother, with all due respect, man, you're 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 not the guy these these young DBs fear anymore. Okay, you got a good play, and you had you had a moment, and you barely. And let's be totally honest about this: you bobbled that ball. You 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 barely, you barely caught it. Yeah, it the, the moment it, it belongs like it was to Jack, a, right? Yeah, that, it it wasn't like it was. Oh, that was a beautiful catch. Oh man, that was a catch. Of, you know, he mocked, you barely caught it. <laughs> you you yeah. caught it and fell. Like it was it was almost like the ball caught you. Like, come on, man. The first thing I thought of was, wow, what a throw by Dak Prescott. That's the first thing I thought. I'm I'm like, damn, Dak just and what made it so nice of a throw, it wasn't like a, a prayer. He was in the pocket, he dropped back, he stepped over to his left, he saw what he saw, and he delivered the dart. It was a perfect ball. And then TY Hutton, he, you know, he he all he had to do was just be there. You know what I'm saying? So, like, t- like T.Y., ain't nobody disrespecting you or, you know, ain't nobody taking your respect. Nobody looking for you at all. So, it's like, you know, it's come on, man. Let, let, let's let's keep it all the way real. Yeah, you've seen the Muddy Ducks, right? Yes. <laughs> Don't you like what Riley says to Bombay? Like, this would fire me up as an individual. You're not even a has-been, Bombay. You're a never was. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, okay, like, calm down there, dude. Like, I, I, I get your man like he cost you the the championship one year of your life, but I I, I don't know. It's, it's like, like it, it kind of reminds me of uh, that scene in Space Jam where uh, Charles Barkley lost his talent and he went to the <laughs> basketball court to play with the kids. And uh, they was like, hold on, wait. You're not Charles Barkley. You're just some wannabe that looks like him. Be gone. Yeah, that is, Charles, gone. that is Charles Barkley's like finest hour, I think. When he's playing basketball with the kids and then he's going to church, he's like, I'll never go out with Madonna again. <laughs> that is one of the best that, that is one of the best scenes in that like people say Space Jam's corny. I'm like, I watch those five minutes when they're at the shrink and when all the players are at that. And Sean Bradley was in, he was never good anyway. Space Jam is legendary. I don't care what no one says, man. Yeah, second one stinks. No one says. Second one stinks. Don't waste your hour and a half watching it. Oh, it was fun. 
It was fun. I mean, if you have a kid, for kids, for the yeah, kids, if you have fun. a kid, you would enjoy it. I mean, LeBron. I, I actually liked all the dissing on LeBron in the second one. Yeah, he was very, he was uh, very self-deprecating. Uh, it was funny. You, if you, if you really, if you really watch the first one back, it's a really a poorly made movie. But, but it's. But I fun. grew up on, I grew up on the Looney Tunes, so right, I enjoyed exactly. It. I grew up on Looney Tunes, so that's why I liked it in general, right? But when you think, when you really watch it back, it's not really. It's the, Michael Jordan is a terrible actor. But like, <laughs> well, we we never say he was a good actor. Hey, that's a good point too. Um, still, st- still one of my favorite movies to this day, man. Yeah. Still one of my favorite movies. It, it is. You know what? I, I, you know, not going too off topic here. You know what I don't like about the second Space Jam? To be honest, I think they go in too many of the like the Warner Bros. It's more like Warner Bros. showing off what they have. Like, oh, oh we have, yeah, yeah, I see we what have, you mean. Yeah, we have Harry Potter. We have Rick and Morty. We have this. That's the like, Matrix. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like okay, cool. Like I get it. Like you know, you're in the DC universe. You do all that, but it's like, and the first one wasn't like that. It was like okay, you go. It was pure Looney Tunes. Yeah, I don't know why they can't do that again. And I didn't like the whole three D Looney Tunes thing. That just kind of bugged me. I feel you. I feel you. So, you know, this NFC playoff picture is really starting to take shape, and the Philadelphia Eagles still um, have to win a game to lock up that number one seed and the division. They're still in control of their destiny. That's what's most important. That whatever they say goes. And the Minnesota Vikings, they're ranked. Um, they're two right now at twelve and three. Uh, San Francisco is eleven and four. And uh, they're the third seed. Tampa Bay is the fourth seed right now at seven and eight. Um, you know, yeah. they're barely treading water. And the Dallas Cowboys are five. Uh, and the Giants are six. And the Commanders are seven. Giants so, need a win, Tone. All they need is a win. They're like the Eagles. All they need is a win, man. Well, hold on. Wait, who? Who, 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 who are you talking about? Say that one time. The Giants. All they have to do is beat the Colts this week, and they're in the playoffs. Get out. Yeah. I think they, okay, they can win that game. But, see, the Colts are a funny team because – they're a the type of team that can drop 30 on you in a half, and all of a sudden they blow I, it. <laughs> I, no disrespect to our Super Bowl hero here in Philadelphia, Nick Foles, but do you really think Nick Foles could drop 30 after what he did Monday night? He looked awful. Yeah, he looked like a guy that hasn't played in a while. And, uh, man, let's just, be, let's just be frank about it. Unless the jersey's midnight green, he's not really that that sharp. He's He still has the highest passer rating in Eagles history. <laughs> It, it's 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 hey, it's like, it's like a percentage Foles, point above Jalen Hurts. <laughs> Nick Foles, you'll always get a cheesesteak on me, my man. Free cheesesteaks all hey, right, all the way around. You know what makes the Nick Foles thing great in Philadelphia? The fact that he it was Nick Foles who got the Eagles to Super Bowl, not Donovan, not Randall, not Vic. Inexplicable. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's funny, right? And I was always that guy who defended Nick Foles when he was here the first time. I'm like, well, this is just vindication for what Chip Kelly did to him. Because I thought Chip Kelly never liked Nick Foles to begin with, and all he did was win with him. But it is sad to see him, like, every team he goes to, he's just awful. It's like, Doug Peterson is, like, the one coach who knew how to use Nick Foles right. Yeah. Didn't Chip Kelly draft Nick Foles? No, Andy Reid did. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I, I, I should say, I, I'm wrong on that. He was fine in Kansas City with Andy Reid. But even though, like, this is what bothered me with Chip, ultimately, when Chip was here. Nick Foles only did was win games for him and put up numbers. And Nick Foles was good for that system, even though he couldn't run. And Chip still didn't like him. I never understood it. Yeah, well, a lot of people didn't like Chip. So, you know, it, it, it's a good trade-off, right? <laughs> so, man. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to bring up it, But back to our initial point. The Giants are one win away from the playoffs. Because everybody keeps losing tone. Like, the Packers are back in this race now. Yeah, I, I didn't see that coming in. There's a chance... They, they, oh no! They they in a way they control their own destiny because they got Detroit and Minnesota. I I think Minnesota's oh, first. Right. Yeah, they can they can knock Minnesota right out of it. Well, out of the race for home field, but technically the Eagles can do that too. I I mean, really, Minnesota's fighting for the two. I'm sorry, not Minnesota. I'm, I apologize, Detroit. Yeah. they can knock Detroit right out of it. Yeah, it, it anyway. might come. It might come down to that that Week 18 game between Packers and I. I think it's. I think that game is Week 18. Hold on. I, I got to double check this. Green Bay. Uh, and then Seattle, they have the Jets and the Rams. You know, they should be able to win those two games. Can, can see, do you think Seattle beats the Jets? It's, it's, it's not a foregone conclusion, I'll tell you that. No. Oh, yeah. Detroit Green Bay's week 18. So that, that would be a, that's going to be a really good game. But Green Bay has to beat Minnesota this week. And it, I don't know if Minnesota's looking or lurking over their shoulder, but the 49ers are right behind that for the two seed. Yeah, and also, I don't think Washington. 
see the Giants are the Giants are truly in control of their destiny. I don't I don't think Washington gets in, man. I yeah, what think, you know Washington can actually get eliminated this week. I would listen, don't put it past Deshaun Watson and the Browns to come in and in their home. Don't 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 put, don't put it past those guys. I'm so, I'm sorry, Tony. I'm gonna look past it because I've watched every Browns game since Deshaun Watson's been back, and mm-hmm. oh my god, does he look terrible? I mean, I you gotta give him next year, but yeah, he he, looks, has, he he hasn't played, yeah, yeah. But man, does he look bad? Like their offense isn't any better with him than it was without him. Like I I, I almost would have said like gave him a self imposed suspension and just been like, dude, you're not playing this year, period. Or if you play, you're playing in like. Week 17, week 18, but which is maybe what they're doing anyway. Like maybe Cleveland didn't think they were in the playoff race to begin with. But look, yeah, I'm listen, I'm I would have thrown them out there, you know, this you know, this season as soon, you know, I, I wouldn't change anything about how they how they handled it. Uh, for the simple fact that at the end of the day, you gotta knock that rust off at some point and better do it now than next year when you 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 really that that that's why they really signed him. They never they didn't sign him for this year, they really signed him for next year and beyond. So and you um, better and you better hope he plays next year because you gave him two hundred thirty million guaranteed. He better he, uh, he better play. I'll tell you that much. But behind the scenes, we have our guy Kevin Boylard, man, our resident Giants fan. He's he, going to he, give us. He's out of the closet, by the way. He's been <laughs> hiding from us the past couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had to, we, we we had to reschedule our guy before, uh, before, so I can't put that all on him. So partially us, partially him. At the end of the day, it's going to be really exciting to hear what Kevin Boylard has to say. Um, about the latest uh, in the NFC, um, the NFC East, these Giants, man. One winner you're in, winner you're in, man. So it's going to be really exciting to hear what he has to say. You guys are locked in on. Good morning, NFC East. He's Jeff Curran. I'm your guy, Tone. Just a second. Keep it locked.